Good evening, and welcome to Release Your Wings. I'm Dan Bagley, and tonight I'm interviewing Veronica McHugh. Tonight we're talking about kindness, and I think you're going to enjoy some of the thoughts she has to share with us. So, Veronica, pretty much the BKs are all about <laughs> kindness, so maybe you have a manufacturing kindness plant somewhere in your psyche <laughs> on there. How does one get to kindness toward most everybody, or toward everybody, maybe? Well, as you may know, the basic teaching of the BKs is that uh, we are all souls, and the intrinsic nature um, of the soul is uh, love, and peace, and happiness. And uh, it would seem to me that uh, kindness is an aspect of yeah. all of those things. So something I've noticed when I've uh, been around the BKs is that they, it feels to me as someone coming in from the outside that they are about the least judgmental people uh, that I come in contact with. And in a funny way, that feels like loving kindness. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. How does it feel from your side? Well, um, thank you for um, paying us that compliment. Um, but I suspect that because it is part of your nature that you are non-judgmental, then that's what you uh, mirror back to others. I'm not saying, of course, the BKs don't have it, but that, yes. You're too that. kind on that one. <laughs> the, uh, so is it, does it, I mean, to me, it feels like looking at things with a soft lens that we that's kind of lovely, don't see those imperfections that if we're looking for them, we might find. It's, so. a, it's a lovely uh, expression, looking at things and looking at others with a soft lens. And of course, as um, you know, that that would have to be a way that you have of looking at your own self too. Uh -huh. That uh, with a measure of compassion, a measure of um, forgiveness, a uh, measure of levity, you know, a, a sense of humor, whatever, that then enables you to maybe ignore or not pay too much attention when somebody screws up or behaves yeah. other than in a kind way. I think that's a really important piece that, I mean, there's, there's sort of that thing that some people say, you know, don't, don't feel good about yourself. That seems silly to me. Mm. Loving yourself may be the bedrock of loving others or seeing them as really all of us being one and the same. Yeah, um, this loving yourself and loving others is sometimes a little bit difficult for me because I, uh, even though I um, subscribe to the idea that it is the inherent nature of the soul, but love is a is a big thing at one level. Pretty heavy and duty. Ha pretty heavy duty. And so, how do you, you know, wrap your heart and your head around um, supposedly unconditionally loving someone whom you may not even really like? Uh -huh. And um, for me, then kindness would be at one level. The, um, the, the baby steps, and not to, you know, underestimate the power of kindness, but in terms of the road to, to love. That I may not know at this juncture how to love you, or, or that I have that um, sufficiently emerged in my own self, but I sure as heck do know what kindness looks like. I know what kindness and respect looks like, and so that... Um, so that kindness, would it stretch to helping the other even if they didn't know behind the scenes you would help them? Or is it just when you're face to face with them? Um, no, I, um, that's an interesting, an interesting thing. I think that uh, the kindness ideally would not be to be seen by others because we do recognize and subscribe to that idea that comes within Christianity mm -hmm. that if I'm doing it to be seen by others then I will get my reward somebody will see it and they'll say oh isn't she nice but if it's coming from a pure and a true place then you're not looking for acknowledgement and you don't start complaining when you're not acknowledged because you know that that you are always the first beneficiary of whatever kindness is that uh -huh. you express. So don't be a Philistine using yes, Jesus' metaphors that's right. within that that's praying right. and look how good I am out yes. of public. 
And in that too, I was just thinking about, um, um, you know, we'll use that expression in kind, yes. meaning like in the yeah. same or, or similar, mm -hmm. whatever. And uh, kindness too, then I see as um, connected with the golden rule, mm -hmm. you know, it's the same. It's like doing unto others as you would, in kind, as right. you would have them uh, do unto you. And so I. So it's really to easy to be kind to someone who we like. <laughs> but the other end of the thing, someone we uh, dislike, someone who's acting out, or even tougher, someone we fear. That's right. I, that may probably be the hardest if we fear because we give them our illusion is they have a power over us in some way That's that right. makes us less than yes. capable. Yes. So within that, is the kindness by doing the kindness, does that put us in a better place in terms of getting better treatment? Or I'm not talking about <laughs> the reason to do it. I'm wondering yes. if there's uh, the goodness you get is worth it no matter what happens on the external. And I don't know that answer. I, I would think so because you're not competing with someone else. Mm -hmm. If you are concerned with self-development and self-awareness and self-realization, then you know the onus is always on you uh -huh. and never on the other person. So that you know, puts Theoretically. Us, theoretically. <laughs> but it, because if you yes. buy into that then, mm -hmm. You know, at, at the best, you'd say, oh, wow, this person yes. is difficult. Yes. Thank you for the way to improve myself. Thank you for the way to <laughs> And if you're around um, people who are also um, interested in the same thing in terms of self-progress, well, then you can't hide. You can't, because yeah. once you start complaining, you're showing yourself. Yeah. You're complaining about the other person or you're being unkind. And the only thing you're revealing is your own lack of patience or your own lack of kindness or yeah. whatever else. You're showing yourself. You can only ever, you know, project your own self. Perhaps that's what we're always doing. In we other are, words, we look at sure. other people and what we're really seeing is the reflection of ourselves. Absolutely. You and show me someone who sees sin everywhere, I'll show you someone who indeed lives yes, in that world. Yes. Uh, so that everybody's there at one level and, and not meaning to be unkind, yeah. but to facilitate um, my growth. And so the, I need the, the ones who are kind that, um, you know, to reflect that part of my nature. And then I need the other ones and I've allocated them perhaps that role of not being so nice. Um, and they will show me a side of me that I need to work on. Uh -huh. that I haven't evolved yet or developed. And so, like you were saying earlier, that uh, um, it's interesting then to see if there's a rejection of them, because it means that I'm not ready yet to look at this aspect in my own self. There was a time close to 20 years ago that I was locked in some uh, legal stuff that was just went on and on and on, and I found myself seeing them as the enemy. And the breakthrough fantasy I had was at the end of time, we are all of these people, I oh, included, we're I, on a stage yes. and we yes. are taking curtain calls and each of us is saying, wasn't he a wonderful heavy? <laughs> <laughs> wasn't I incredible uh, victim of this? And we're yes. all taking our bows and we're as people on stages yes. will do, wasn't it in an incredible role? Yes. And in a funny way, that gave me a, a lot of relief from the belief that they were indeed bad that evil, they were exactly uh, but they were playing a role for which we were all somehow in cahoots yes and yeah. that's it it's like even um, you can see for your own self sometimes that in this drama of life that you actually distribute if you like the 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 parts that you are the casting director <laughs> and you say this is the enemy and this is the friend and this is the hero and so on and so forth. Uh, but then it's up to you to uh, You know, the, the downside of that, that philosophy is that makes you totally responsible that for makes your own you happiness. Completely, <laughs> oh, isn't that something? <laughs> yeah, yes. oh gosh, you mean I can't blame them on ruining in, my day. Right, in other words, that, that what happens should not be um, what's responsible for your happiness. Yeah. Yeah. So within that, let's come back to that uh, being kind to oneself, mm -hmm. 
because if I'm fussing at myself, and I have to admit that if anyone else said some of the things to me that I say to myself sometimes, Dan, how can you be so absent-minded? You're just, you're stupid. Yes. Or something like that. Yes. I go, oh my gosh, I, I would be devastated. You would be so insulted. Yeah. <laughs> But maybe mm. it's just habit that we sort of treat ourselves. Maybe I'll whip myself into, my, into shape, no pain, no gain kind of thing. I don't well, know. Well, um, I don't know that that will get you there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty certain it won't. Yeah. And, of um, course, you also know that, that uh, if I'm doing it to myself, there might even be the inclination to be exactly. that, hold that uh, kind of judgment over um, someone else. But I think think that uh, there's variety of reasons and one of them you're right in saying that it's a, um, it's just a habit but um, I also think that the soul at some level has known um, fullness and completion mm -hmm. and that uh, uh, um, you know I, I sometimes say that the um, where sorrow resides is in the gap between our idealism and what I find myself doing uh -huh. You know, right. and then I beat up on myself for it. As if beating up on yourself helps. Is going to help. And yeah. sometimes that can be the residuals of my faith tradition, for instance. Exactly. We were taught to feel guilty, etc. And paradoxically, um, in the feeling guilty, that's the best I can do in the circumstance. And uh, because I'm feeling guilty about this thing, it means I must be good. Yeah, it gives yes. me a solution to yes. some degree if exactly. I feel badly enough exactly. about it. Uh, I occasionally with my, I teach at the university, yeah. and I'll occasionally have a student who says she, she or he, you know, normally it's she these days, is trying to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, every time I have a cigarette, I just hate myself. Yes. And, I, and I always find myself saying, don't do that. If you're going to have a cigarette, Love yourself. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then just That's don't right. do it as often. That's right. Uh, because hating yes. yourself will create the yes. craving for another cigarette. That's right. So it's not no pain, no gain. Yeah. Uh, BKs, I think, would agree there's mm -hmm. no pain, no pain. Mm -hmm. ideally. Know, like, ideally. Like French fries at McDonald's. You ideally. want some pain with that? <laughs> yeah, ideally. Because yes. old habits die hard. Yes. So kindness to self is the foundation for kindness to others. Kindness to self. Um, well, again, sometimes we have to admit that it, it is possible to practice on others. Uh -huh. You know, that so sometimes we... I can feel better about you than about myself. Uh, that's nice. So by practicing on others, maybe yes. it gives me the uh, encouragement to be nicer. That's me. right. And then ultimately, I think that through that, you can reach the point where there is genuine love. Yeah. The, uh, so this, probably the opposite of kindness is resistance to what oh, someone is. Absolutely. So absolutely. the acceptance may be also one of the first behavioral things mm -hmm. we do. In, acceptance in of kindness. however you are, whoever you are. Wherever you that, are right yes, now. Yes, exactly. So within that, uh, maybe the kindness just makes life every day a little easier because there aren't so many quote idiots out there getting in my way <laughs> driving too slowly coming all the way down from north to yeah. get in front of me and drive seven miles an hour but it makes life so much easier and so yeah. much more pleasant the other one seems so forceful to have to be Absolutely. complaining and that nobody's up to snuff and anything yeah um, it just makes for an easier and a much more pleasant life so does kindness mean you give everybody everything they want? Um, I, in other words, I, I can almost imagine someone saying, well, that means everyone's going to run all over me because <laughs> I'll always do what they tell me to. Yes. Or. No, I, I don't yeah. think that's the case. Um, and, uh, but if you understand really truly what they do want, ah. that's so it, that is to be back, able to see yeah. beyond what they're asking for and see what they really need and to be so full in your own self that yes, you can satisfy that. You don't reject them thinking they're wanting too much or they're going to want more, but see what they're really asking for and it could just be acknowledgement. So that's a very nice way to wrap up to something you said at the beginning, that really kindness is listening to people, acknowledging and them, them. Yeah. and seeing them mm -hmm. in a way that 
there is a perfectionism regardless of That's how they're right. showing up on the surface. That's right. Yeah. Good. Maybe that is the best thought on kindness I can have <laughs> at this moment. Thank you, Brian. Oh, pleasure. Thank yeah. you, Dan. There is a story about a mythical swan. And this swan's magic power is that it's able to select the pearls on the shore instead of the stones. In the same way, the practice of kindness requires that I select and only pick up in my mind the pure positive qualities of the people around me. And just like that mythical swan, I may see the defects, the negative qualities sitting along the shore of their life. But I can choose not to focus on those. There's a wisdom to kindness that knows if I see negative qualities in others, two things will happen. My heart will harden, but I also run the risk of catching that quality, that defect. So the practice of kindness means that I focus on other people's pure qualities, knowing that that keeps the heart soft and the soul safe. In my mind right now, I emerge one person who I may have conflict with, who I may have trouble seeing the goodness in, and I bring them in front of me in my mind. And like that swan that picks up the pearls, I choose to focus right now on one beautiful quality in that person. Let me see that quality emanating from them in my mind. And let me have appreciation for that quality. And as I look at them, I see them as more than just a body, more than the role they play, but I see them as a soul emanating that pure quality, that pearl of virtue that they have within them. And I notice how my heart softens, how it expands how I return to a deeper sense of peace and ease in my own being. I notice how kindness brings more light into my own mind. And I decide that the next time I see this person, the next time I have a conversation with this person, I will be like that mythical swan and I will keep my focus on their good qualities, on their light, on that pure quality within their soul. The practice of kindness softens the heart brings ease to the mind, but there's also the other magical effect of kindness. And just like if I focus on a defect, I will catch it. In the same way, when I focus on people's pure qualities, when I pick up the pearls instead of the stones within them, I too will begin to radiate those pure qualities. I will begin to feel a sense of belonging, connectedness, and love for the world around me. So today, I will let go of being so harsh with the people around me. And I will be like that mythical swan that sees the stones along the shore, but chooses instead to focus and hold in my mind the vision of the pure qualities of each person I come in contact with. 
This vision is a huge act of kindness towards others. It meets their deepest need to be seen for who they truly are. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening.